Bitcoin is back with an explosive pump. That's right. And this is at a very, very strange time in history. The price movement comes as Bitcoin is also topping Google Trends, which it hasn't done for a very, very long time. We have absolutely unprecedented weakness in the US dollar, shockingly being supported here by Macron and the French government, distancing from the US dollar. On top of all this, we have documents leaking that seem to suggest that the US is ramping up for what appears to be a global military offensive. Let's just go ahead and call a spade a spade. Ooh we have a lot to talk about. And in my opinion, the most important thing that we should talk about is how we can make money in this brand new, wild new world that involves effectively weakness within the US dollar. Meanwhile, Bitcoin continues to creep its way up. And I dare say it is worth noting that this week we are rallying into two fundamental catalysts that could push price downwards. We have FOMC this week, as well as the ETH Shanghai event, which will allow for people to unstake their staked ETH that has been locked within the beacon chain for what feels like forever. Let's get into it because we're going to be talking brass tacks on where we are in the cycle, what I think is going to happen, and how I plan to make an absolutely astronomical amount of money from crypto over the coming years. So first, let's dive into it. It does not take a scientific eye to realize that, hey, look, something has just kind of changed here. With Bitcoin peaking above this 28.5k resistance, you see it touched 29 before, but you see it really smash through here. And this is after almost a month of it plateauing here, right around the 28k mark. It's become almost a stable coin, which has led to many such jokes in the industry. But let's be honest, Bitcoin going up, stalling out, and then going up more is very bullish. It's much better than it going up and just petering out. And that is because for the first time, we have very legitimate reasons to wonder whether the risk of Bitcoin going down in price is greater than the risk of not owning Bitcoin at all. We see governments hoarding gold for the first time since the 1980s. Why would they be hoarding gold? Well, that's because the US dollars have really taken the place of gold as a reserve currency in the interim. But right now, the US dollar is undergoing its biggest test in years. Take a listen to this clip. Why should I be worried? Yeah, well, that was a great summary, Jesse. And, you know, really one of the driving goals of our foreign policy for decades now has been protecting the US dollar. And at this point, uh, this administration is throwing that away. And the reason that matters for regular people, not only does that erode our influence in the world, uh, it's bad for our economy, it, it takes away some of the advantages um, that we have, uh, but this is something where if the abandonment of the, do of the dollar takes off, you know, for 80 years now, we have flooded the world with US dollars. They've kept hold of them. That's been fantastic because they give them useful things you know, they give us toasters and cars and copper mines for those dollars. Now, the problem is, if we throw that away, all of those dollars come flooding back into America. That means we have way too many dollars. We have a word for that, which is inflation. So we could see enormous inflation, and that's at a time when our banks are already wobbling. That's right, me familia. We are firmly in FAFO mode when it comes to the US dollar. Not only have we printed an absolutely irresponsible, unthinkable amount of these dollars over the last few decades, but now we're looking at a time where other countries for the first time in decades might actually be looking to distance themselves from the US dollar, to start trading crude oil and energy in other currencies such as the Yuan, and we have governments no longer saving in the US dollar, but starting to save in gold again. Now, of course, I know where you're going with this, and you are so damn smart. That's right. We have a new form of gold, a digital gold, transportable, immutable, open source, and of course, predictable in supply version of gold, and that is Bitcoin. If you think the 2020 narrative around inflation drove Bitcoin up to astronomically high prices, well, you have absolutely no idea what could be coming in a world where people start to lose faith or governments start to lose faith in the US dollar. And wouldn't you know it, we're kind of entering into a world just like that right now. One of our closest allies dating back to the 1700s, France. Vive la France. That's right, the French revolutionists, the cradle of modern Western democracy. They are looking to distance themselves from the United States amidst tensions with China. Now, we said this over and over again. In 2022, when the United States seized US dollar reserves from Russia, that completely changed the course of history. It changed the belief that the US dollar was something that could be reliably stored as a reserve currency. It completely ruined what the United States has built up over decades, maybe even centuries. And that one moment will be studied in the history books for years or decades to come as the moment 
that America, and most importantly, the US dollar, lost its position of dominance in the world. Because if you can't trust your reserve currency, then why would you hold your country's wealth in it? As a leader, you must analyze the risk of holding versus not holding, and in this case, the risk of holding dollars and the risk of being tied directly to the dollar is starting to become overwhelming to even some of our closest Western allies. The fun just doesn't stop, as we have a commercial real estate debt issue that is starting to rear its ugly head. That's right, commercial real estate is wildly underwater, and the demand for commercial real estate is not the same as it was even just a few years ago with the complete transformation to a work from home environment, a digital new economy where people do not need to go into office buildings anymore. Class A commercial real estate in Southern California is now being sold well underwater by some of the biggest commercial real estate companies like Blackstone. Bailouts, inflation, commercial real estate suffocating the economy, bad government debt. That's right, all of this, every single last element of this is going to require some form of government intervention in order to save the economy from something potentially truly bad. And government intervention only comes in the form of more dollars being printed. What if every country starts to say, you know what, we don't want these dollars, and we send them back to the United States and trade them instead for things like gold, Bitcoin, or other currencies? All of these things together would add new elements to the already staggering problem of inflation. Now, something you must understand is that if hyperinflation does happen, and I'm not saying it'll happen quickly or overnight, but you have to understand that once hyperinflation starts to take hold, it happens extremely fast. The last modern example we have of it was in the Weimar Republic in Germany. This was post-World War I. You can see that over the course of 1920 over to 1923, there was at first gradual inflation and then all of a sudden geometric inflation. We had one paper mark effectively being worth one mark of gold in 1918. And by 1923, the end of it, you had gold being worth over one trillion paper marks. Now, of course, the United States economy is far more evolved. There's no way we would have 1 trillion X inflation over the course of four years. But this is just to illustrate that hyperinflation is absolutely devastating once it takes hold. And the United States dollar is certainly skating on thin ice. I'm not rooting for US hyperinflation, but it sure as hell says something when Bitcoin becomes the top of Google trends once again. And this is while a country is doing absolutely everything it can do to attack, discredit, and downright criminalize the industry that is here to save the modern economy. And maybe that's just the point. Bitcoin is clearly here to stay. Its ability to hedge against the potential tail risk of inflation is real, and learning about it is something that every American should be doing right now. But the real question is, how do we make money on this trend? Remember, if we're on the four-year cycle, this would put us at the analogous year of 2019. Now, in 2019, there was this absolutely astronomical run-up of Bitcoin from just about $3,000 all the way up to $12,000, $13,000 here. It actually spiked, I believe, over $14,000 on a wick, but that's that's not reflected here on the CoinGecko chart, you see that it went up many Xs. And then it settled almost all the way back from whence it came. The truth is it really bottomed out here about $7,000, about double where it started at the beginning of the rally. And then we had this COVID crash, which was an inorganic black swan. But hey, look, we very well might have some scares in the future. Many people are worried, hey, look, is this 2019 all over again? Are we just going to settle back down here at 7K or whatever? Maybe that means that this run up to 28K wasn't all that organic. Maybe whatever we peak at here, the price will cut in half over the coming years. Well, here's the thing about that. Long term, I believe Bitcoin is headed towards a million dollar price point. That is within a decade. That is my personal belief. Could be totally wrong. Not going to put my life on the line here. But I do believe that when you look at Bitcoin in retrospect at $28,000, at $35,000, at whatever price we've seen it at over the last few months, now that we've seen some real narrative shifts, some global macroeconomic shifts that totally change the perception of Bitcoin in this climate, I believe that it's relatively cheap and that everyone will want some exposure to this asset. But with Bitcoin, of course, comes Ethereum, comes, of course, the rest of this innovative decentralized ecosystem. Now, I personally will be waiting a little bit more heavily into Bitcoin for the near future, as I believe that we're kind of in a Bitcoin moment. As we look at global international tensions, as we look at regulatory uncertainty and all these very interesting things, I believe that Bitcoin will probably steal a lot of the limelight. But there is absolutely no doubt, and it has never been the case, that Bitcoin goes on a run and leaves the rest of the ecosystem behind. The old people who wish they could put this cat back in the bag have no ability to stop Bitcoin whales from bidding on alts and circulating money throughout the rest of the ecosystem. So while I personally will be stacking up my Bitcoin here in the early stages of the next bull market or the late stages of the last bear market, who knows where we are? That's not the point. The point is to me, 
the risk of not holding Bitcoin has started to wildly outpace the risk of volatility to the downside. If we go down, I'm prepared to buy more. And that is once again part of my plan, which is stacking bits of Bitcoin each and every week, stacking altcoins every single week in accordance to my plan. Now, how am I dividing up my Bitcoin stack? I highly encourage you all to go to the category section of CoinGecko, which is available right here on the top nav bar. This will let you browse through the categories that currently exist in the ecosystem. I'll be coming out with a video where I explain how much I'm allocating to each category, understanding that of all the cash I'm looking to deploy, I'll deploy little bits into each category week over week. That is the easiest way to do this. Now, sometimes I'll probably get excited and deploy more into a specific coin or category, depending on the mood of the market. And I'll also be aggressively farming airdrops over the coming days and weeks, as there are a lot of cool coins that will be doing airdrops. We're going to have a video on how you can make thousands of dollars for absolutely zero investment, zero risk. In fact, some people were able to cash out millions of dollars on the Arbitrum airdrop. If you're not airdrop farming in 2023, you're literally not doing the single easiest, most important way that you can get from zero to tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands if you're very good at it. And then a couple of good trades will get you into being a millionaire. This is not Fugazi stuff of dreams. This is literally how the game works. And we're going to teach you how to play it here on this channel. But this isn't 2020. This isn't 2021. We've seen way too much in 2022 to pretend that we can predict all the variables. Yes, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. And I believe this stuff is going up. But if you're going to get involved, you need to take responsibility. You need to learn to research this stuff. You need to take these videos and use them as a starting place. Get excited because you can change your future here in this industry, but it's up to you, not me, to make that decision, to take the risk, to potentially seek out the rewards that crypto has to offer, and to deal with what feels like, at times, a never-ending onslaught of bad news and attacks on the industry. If you're up for the challenge, you too can complete the quest and make it to the promised land of crypto holder glory. But you absolutely have to be prepared for the challenges that lay within. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to click on this one. It's an even better video. I know you're gonna love it, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.